Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro, and today I wanted to do a tutorial on uh, SVGs and using them as both background images and also not in order to create this sort of, uh, it's kind of trendy, I've been seeing it a lot in 2018, this type of landing page as you can see here on my monitor, uh, where basically you have different cutouts in the SVG itself, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Uh, using a Adobe Illustrator CC, though you don't have to use it, you can use any vector application. And then I'm also going to show you how to actually make it a reality in the browser uh, with HTML and CSS. All right, so before we get started, make sure you check out Corsetro.com and subscribe here. All right, let's get started. All right, so to get started, I'm using Adobe Illustrator for this, though you can use any other vector drawing application that has a pen tool that allows you to use Bezier curves. All right, so if you don't have Illustrator, don't let this you know detract from uh, the experience of watching this tutorial. So uh, I'm going to come up here to the, um, let's see here, we'll go to web and we'll just leave this preset on. So I'm going to hit create. All right, so now we have all these windows up here. Let's get this zoomed up so we can see the whole thing. All right, so we'll say this just is the uh, the above the fold portion of a web layout. And by the way, what I'm doing here, this could also work with you know something that's for mobile or for apps or whatever too. All right, so um, what I want to do is uh, we'll just start off with the pen tool in and of itself. And I'm gonna start up here up, up top by just putting an anchor point right on the upper left corner. You have your guides that will help you naturally here in most applications and then somewhere probably around the middle doesn't have to be the exact middle but i guess I'll, we have the guide there might as well just left click and so here's our second anchor point we have one two and then now this section will cut it out from the svg so that it's pure white and that way the um, navigation can go here all right so i'm just going to come down a little bit i'm going to hold shift and just to drag out to create a Bezier curve and then just end it right around, I'd say right around there. I'm just eyeballing it really. Um, and this is one of these common trends I'm, I'm starting to see more of, like some type of unique cutout where there's a, uh, a navigation here. So I'm going to just come all the way around and then there we go. I was holding shift just to create uh, perfectly um, correct angles and lines there. So now with this selected, we don't want a, a um, you know, an, a stroke. So I'm going to hit zero. All right, sweet. Now the fill don't want white and I'd rather have a gradient. So if I click on the gradient over here and click it over the, gra the gradient tool over here, um, I'm just going to choose linear, linear, hit G and then just drag kind of like a diagonal. All right, and again, there's no right or wrong, and this is just the approach I'm taking. So for the first color, switch to RGB here. I don't know, maybe I'll have something like a, um, a blue. I didn't have one like really specific in mind. Something like right around there will be good. Um, so that color code is 2AA9FF right there. All right, hit enter. We'll take this second color picker and we'll go back to RGB. This one we'll just have, uh, we'll kind of come over here to the green section, actually like that right there. So that's three FFFEC, I believe. It's kind of small on my monitor. I'm on a 4K resolution, though I'm just in this uh, container of 1920. All right, so that's good right there. You can, of course, have more colors if you wish. Uh, you could use a, a radio gradient or whatever. But um, I'm, I'm happy with this right here. It's pretty subtle, uh, but it does have nice color. So now we could just call it quits and that's it. You could have a logo over here. You have your navigation over here um, and that's that. But we can add even more. We can do, you know, uh, here in Adobe Illustrator at least, and I know other vector applications have it, just the ability to cut out easily from this shape to, to, to create more you interesting, uh, a more interesting background here. So. I think I'll do that. Um, and one thing that you can do, I mean, once you start to understand the vector tools and all the th different things you can do, you can just have fun with it. So um, I'm going to take the ellipse tool 
All right, just drag out something around that size for now. Um, control C, Control F to duplicate. All right, notice I kind of put it directly in the center over here, holding Shift, waiting for those guidelines to show up. Control C, Control F. Control C, Control F. Maybe one more time. So I have like five of them. All right, now we're going to take all of them and we're going to go to Window and then Pathfinder. It's showing up on my other screen. And we're just going to unite them. And since that has happened, oops, I think I also had the background. There you go. Now we want to unite them. Now we have the single shape right here. Um, what I want to do is, you know, we could leave it like this. That's fine. But I want to kind of smooth these out, these uh, these edges right there. So to do that, we can use um, the small smooth tool. And that's right here. So I'm just going to go over this area. I'm just going to left click. And that notice now it's just smooth those out ever so slightly. You can do it several times and it'll make it even smoother. I think I'm happy with that. We only did it to the top portion. Bottom portion isn't going to be used. And what I'm using this for, by the way, let's make it white. I'm going to cut it out of this section down here. I'm going to make this really large. I'm holding shift and I want to get this into place. All right, something right around there. You take both of these paths selected and then just minus front. All right, so now we just have something that's a little bit different. And instead of just a straight line to separate whatever contents beneath this uh, this hero section, um, now it's you know something just unique. I, I'm not sure necessarily if I even like it, but this is just for demonstration. So um, at this point, we could call it quits, but there's one more thing I want to do. You can also, I, also another thing I'm starting to notice is I, as a common trend, is um, having other kind of SVG overlays of different geometric shapes. Um, and so I'll do two of those. Common is just a, 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 a common element is like a sphere or an ellipse. Let's get this here in the center. And maybe we'll just have this half. So I'll take the direct selection tool up there, just select the left anchor point and delete it. And then also to make it uh, stand out in different color, we can just take this here and we're going to modify this gradient for it right here. So um, first I'm gonna take this color right here and we're going to make the opacity zero. And then we'll take this and we'll just uh, kind of make it more on the, the pinkish side. All right, so it's kind of subtle. Uh, and that's that's the look I'm going for. So that's the first one. Um, we can do other unique stuff. We could take the polygon tool. All right, and then so we have like a, a, a one, two, three, four, five, six, a hexagon. And uh, we have these, you can barely see them, these little corner radiuses we can pull these in something interesting like that uh, let's go put this up over here and then delete the right side of this and then move it over all right I know it looks kind of crappy right now but um, once we get the type on and a navigation and kind of like a centered sub, like a headline in sub headline, it starts to look pretty decent. All right. So these are the three shapes that we're going to use uh, for this sort of colorful landing page. And so uh, real quickly, I'm just going to take these and where's my layers at? And we can click this, uh, collect for export. All right. So we can do that for each one of these. Um, let's see here, here, and here. Probably could have selected all three and just clicked it once. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, I had all three selected apparently. Let's back up. I just want this. Layers. Oh, we need to select it actually right here. There we go. So now, uh, let's see if I can select all three. This is like one of the first times I'm using this option. There we go. Now they're all there. And... We have them named, uh, this one's gonna be, uh, this is gonna be on the right. I'm just gonna call this the right side. This is the right here. This is on the left. 
and then asset four is just a BG for background. All right, so now we want this to be of a type SVG and I have a, a, a new folder for the project, um, for the web project in my code folder. This is where I store my projects at. I just call this uh, SVG, BGs, web design, whatever. Name it what you want. And then also an empty images folder. That's where we're gonna put those. So select folder and now it's exported them. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and get started on the coding portion. So to do that, I have that folder opened up with the images. We need to create an index HTML file. I'm gonna put hold, oh, by the way, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code. This is free um, and it gives you some handy snippets. I'm gonna put uh, an exclamation point, hit enter to get just our basic boilerplate down. Uh, control B right here will hide the sidebar. All right, so let's just call this SVG BGs. And then we'll get a um, reference to a CSS file. So link rel equals style sheet. And then href is forward slash CSS folder. Doesn't exist yet. This will be main.css. All right, let's just knock out the HTML real quick. So, um, and there's not gonna be much. So the very first two elements I wanna place here. Um, so if you think about this in terms of, uh, you know, um, HTML in terms of what comes first. First, we have the body tag. This will contain the BG SVG as the background. And then on top of that, next comes the two left and right images. So that's, that would be this one and this one. And we'll use uh, position absolute for that. So we'll have image source equals forward slash images, left ISVG. We'll give it an ID of left. We'll replicate this, control shift down arrow key. This will be right. And we'll call this right as well. All right. Then next after that, we have a nav. I'm just gonna put the logo inside of it. It's going nowhere. The ID is logo. And we'll just say awesome company. After that, an unordered list for the list navigation. So we'll have list item a link going nowhere about us. And then we'll hit shift alt down arrow key just three times. And then I'll put in services and contact, something very simple. All right, then after that, we only have a div class of container and we'll put in an H1 element with my snazzy headline and then a P paragraph. I'm just gonna type in lorem, hit enter. Uh, I don't think I want it to be quite this much text, so I'm gonna just get rid of over here. All right, there we go. That's it for the HTML, very, very simple. Um, so next, let's go ahead and create that folder. So Control-B, we're gonna create the CSS folder. Inside of it, a file called main.css. All right, so to get started, let's uh, control B again. We'll have our body and our HTML element and we'll just say height 100%, margin zero to get rid of default margins. The color of the text elements will be white for our headline, subheadline, then font family. I have a Montserrat installed on my PC, but if you don't, it's a Google web font, you can just use the link code above and paste it in uh, main CSS at the top. Use whatever font you want, of course. Um, reference the anchors here. So uh, color, we'll say is white as well. Text decoration, none. We don't want an underline. And then referencing the body specifically, we'll give our background. All right, so URL is gonna be pointing down, out of folder to images and then to BG SVG and no repeat. And then also we're gonna have the background size is cover, height. Oh, I already have height 100%. And then padding bottom, I'm gonna give a lot just to simulate you know, what it looks like beneath so we can see those, uh, those little things, those little, the ocean wave thing that we did. Um, so left, 
position we'll say is absolute and then top so from the top of the browser we'll push it down by 60 percent at this point let's check to see just what it looks like it's going to look like crap but let's we'll see what it looks like in the browser i'm going to go to view integrated terminal and i i have i'm just going to put http server here now this is an npm package if you don't have it installed just type in npm by the way, you need Node.js and NPM as well before you can run that command. But NPM, I install HTTP-Server-G for global. So that looks like, for instance, uh, NPM, I, and then I is a shorthand for install. It would be um, HTTP-Server-G. You only have to run that once. Then you can just run HTTP server from anything. And now it's going to give us a little quick server at localhost 8080. Oh, and by the way, uh, when we exported it from Adobe, when we specified the images folder, it created an SVG folder itself, which will break the link. So if I reveal this in Explorer, we just have to um, get into there and then put that into images itself and then delete the SVG folder. So um, right now it's being used. We'll just leave it there. All right. So now uh, this is what we have going pretty ugly. So don't worry. Uh, we'll fix that momentarily. All right, so uh, coming back here to our main CSS file, let's just say control B. And now, so let's see, we have our left. Now we need a right. The position, of course, will be absolute as well. And then if I could actually spell it or type it right. And then this one, we're gonna have top by about 20% and then we're gonna have right zero that will push it to the right of the browser. And then Z index, I'll put one. And then after that, we're gonna have a nav. So the padding, we're gonna give it thick padding, so 50 pixels. By the way, we're not gonna make this responsive. So just be wary, um, if you wanted to make it responsive, you're gonna to need to use media queries to kind of reset things or change them a little bit. Um, so next we have our nav UL our unordered list, list style type, none will get rid of those bullets, and then we're gonna float it to the right of the browser. Next is our nav UL li. These will just display in line, float left, or yeah, float left. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to do that when we already have display in line, kind of using the old school stuff. You can use the CSS grid now actually, but just making it this fast. Uh, we're gonna make them black padding will be zero 30 pixels from the right and left and then our logo we're going to increase the size to 2 em let me just save this for now check out what we have so far in the browser main uh let's see your css main.css uh, by the way, this is an ideal um, development environment. I mean, normally, I would use something that would auto refresh, auto reload the browser and stuff upon file changes, but I didn't want to have all that set up for this tutorial. So now we're actually getting there pretty quickly. So uh, let's keep on going. It's actually not very much left. I think just three more rule sets after this. So we're going to have our container. We'll say text align center. The width is 60%. And the margin will be 110 pixels from the top and bottom and auto will center it. Then we'll have our H1 element. We're gonna increase the size to 3.5 EM. And then our container paragraph, we'll say font size increases as well to 1.3 and then the line height will um, increase by 1.4. So now uh, let's go back, refresh, there we go. So uh, hopefully that was a pretty good uh, primer just on using, you know, being very creative with your SVG graphics and using it, you know, to relatively quickly to, to create something that's um, pretty colorful and vibrant.